Welcome back to Candy Adventures. I'm Chris. And I'm Elizabeth. And we live back here full time in this 2006 North Star pop-up truck camper with our little dog Mona and some off-road toys like this. Uh, and because we live full time in this truck camper and we don't have a home base, no house, no land, anything like that, we have to run errands um, from remote locations. We're currently living, as you can tell by the saguaro cactuses everywhere, we're in Arizona and we're living on some BLM land temporarily. In the middle of the desert. <laughs> and we have some chores we have to do today, which is some of you guys have bought stickers from us. Uh, I'll blur, I'll flip it around so you can't see the name and address of people. Um, but we have to go find a mailbox to put these in. Also, we have to go find a location uh, that we can mail off these. And these are, are our top tier Patreon merch and they are beer bottle cap fishing lures that we made that call back to when we were in, well, we're a small channel now, but when, <laughs> when we were in even smaller and we lived on Guam, we did a video where we caught jungle perch with these. That's a jungle, that's a jungle perch on our Bud, Bud Light Lime. That was an excuse to drink beer that night was so we could make these lures. So locally these are called flagtail. Bumped into a lot of people that tell me these are flagtail. Um, so depending on where you're watching, this is either a jungle perch or a flag tail. So. And that's always been our top tier Patreon gift as we hand make these and send them in the mail. It's an excuse to drink beer and make some handmade crafts for people that decide to donate. <laughs> it sure is. It's a win-win for everybody. So because we're in the middle of the desert in um, BLM, the way to get to the post office is going to be rugged. <laughs> We could tear everything down here, but that's really annoying. When you live full time out of your camper, to cons constantly tear down everything. Your whole setup. Unhook your solar, put your bicycle and motorcycles back on the trailer, put your generator back up, take your clothes back down and repack them. Because in a pop up camper, everything All that, that you. that has to come down. So, what we're going to do instead is take our CRF 300L dual sport here, and I think I figured out a way we can get to. I thought it was Salome, but Salome, Arizona, and it has a post office. And I think we can go do our business there, but it's 30 miles through the desert, uh, all off road. So yeah. I think it'll be a fun way to get there and we don't have to tear all this down. So it should be pretty exciting. But before we do that, I wanna prepare a dessert now so that it's ready when we get back because it has to sit in our cooler freezer combo unit. You're making dessert for us to eat when we get back? Last video, we made something called mango float. Uh, which is really a delicious thing, which I picked up uh, spending a lot of time in the Philippines. And this time, because we're in Arizona and there's date trees everywhere, I want to make it the same thing out of dates. And it's basically sweetened condensed milk with a layer of graham, crack graham crackers and mango. But I just want to switch the sweet, I want to switch the mangoes for dates. And I want to switch the graham crackers for... Vanilla wafers. Yep, because that's just what we have. You live full time in the desert. How are you going to do that? And that is with our Blue Eddy cooler so we are going to get this thing fired up and i'm gonna let elizabeth tell you a little bit about it because this video um i'm gonna say it's sponsored by blue eddie but it's not blue eddie does not pay us i dear god i wish they would um <laughs> but they did send us this free unit and so i just want to tell you about it real quick so we can make our dessert and head through the desert to make this date float we'll be using the blue eddie's new three in one fridge freezer ice maker unit known as the swap solar so not only is this a fridge, it can go down to below freezing temperatures and it has an ice maker in the side. This swap solar unit not only comes with the three in one fridge freezer ice maker, it also comes with a power bank. This is the AC180T and what makes it different from other power banks on the market is that on the top here, under this flap, are two swappable batteries. This fridge freezer has four different ways to charge, one of which is swapping batteries with the 180T. The other three methods are going to be plugging into a 12 volt charger, similar to like a carport charger. You can also plug it straight into any traditional outlet or straight into this power bank, or you can even plug solar panels straight into this freezer. These swappable batteries are lithium ion phosphate batteries, which tend to run cooler, are more reliable and regarded as overall safer batteries. So we have a little more comfort running this fridge freezer for multiple days at a time. Now we're going to set the temperature to below freezing because this date float actually has to sort of freeze and solidify to become like an ice cream cake. So this is just some sweetened condensed milk, the greatest ingredient you could ever use in anything uh, confectionery or, or baking or sweet on planet Earth. And mixed with some evaporated milk 
And I'm just gonna mix this together. And then my base layer, it's just like making lasagna. If you watched our last video, you're just layering up uh, crunchy vanilla wafers or graham crackers, sweetened condensed milk and evaporated milk milk mixed together. And then uh, for the fruit here, I have uh, some dates. With our fresh local dates. It's kind of a Middle Eastern mango flow, kind of, I guess, a Filipino mixed with Middle Eastern here. We didn't really know this until staying in this area for a bit, that this region is just known for growing dates. I guess it's the best temperature and uh, just overall climate to grow date palms. And you can find dates everywhere here and all the different variants of dates. What temperature did you set it? Like, like 28. All right, we got all the windows open. You can see all this ventilation we have, and we all got a fan going in there. So Mona's gonna hang out here while we go explore the desert. It's still February. It's only gonna get, to, it's about 70 degrees, and today's gonna be the high today is 68, 70 degrees. So she'll be fine in here, which is another good reason why we're going today, is it's not gonna get too hot, and we don't have to worry about her overheating in here, because um, it's really nice in there. Uh, it's it's uh, nice and shaded and a fan going, so it's actually cooler in there than outside. <laughs> she wants to lay in the sun so bad anyway. <laughs> Must go be good. Oh, boy. Oh, you're so dirty. Just you and the Keystone. Enjoy your nap. bummed Chris spotted a snake crossing the road and I wanted to frame up the video of the motorcycle approaching it and the snake took off I tried to grab it in Arizona most of the things that are venomous have rattles so pretty confident in just grabbing it um, I also have my hunting license for Arizona and why that's relevant is by Arizona law in order to handle reptiles and amphibians you are required to have a hunting license so I bought a $20 hunting license for the day so that I, if we found any reptiles or uh, different herps, I could go ahead and grab them legally. Even though I'm not killing them or selling them, it's required by law in Arizona for whatever reason to have a hunting license to even uh, touch a reptile. Did you want a hunting license to touch a reptile? Uh, I could care less about <laughs> touching a snake. <laughs> the lizards just sit there, so uh, nope. Don't need it. <laughs> Our letters and our fish hooks, and we successfully made it through the desert. And only saw two snakes. All right, lures and stickers have been mailed off. Do we need any other inference while we're out? We literally don't have any space to put anything else, even <laughs> if we did need something. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Yeah. 
Did you have a good nap? Did you have a good nap? So we were gonna treat ourselves to some uh, restaurant food and not eat on paper plates and hot brown for once, but uh, the good Lord didn't want to see it that way. Because and the cafe closed exactly when we got there. And the other place that Google said was a restaurant was not a restaurant, it was a gas station. Um, so we didn't, but that's uh, maybe a, a good thing because it gives me the opportunity to go for a run because otherwise I wouldn't go for a run right after a big meal, <laughs> a big meal. So I think I'm going to change clothes and take advantage of this beautiful sunny day with there's no wind and then maybe gather some firewood so we can cook over a fire later. So as we're walking around collecting firewood, I looked down and saw these little tiny white flowers scattered across this very dark black rock. And they're actually called desert stars, which is really cute. And uh, I feel like accurate because it's this jet black, very dark rock with these little bright white spots of light, these little desert stars. And they're just kind of speckled everywhere like the night sky. No problems as far as it being dry. It's running dry. It's surprisingly a lot of firewood. I don't think people camp here very much. No. It's deceptive, but each one of these Palo Verde trees has like some broken branches laying underneath it and it's very dry and very hard. So it doesn't look like a lot of trees, maybe from the drone or from the camera, but all these little bushes are small trees. It's actually a lot of them here. Only downside is it's firewood with thorns on it. All these, one long thorn. Should be good for kindling though and getting it going. All the little, a lot of surface area. It's yeah. Really brittle and dry. So this is what it looks like living. You can see these giant thorns on it. As Chris said, it's a yellow Palo Verde and it's just because of these little leaflets on it that turn yellow. What's very cool about this tree which I've never read about in other trees, is that it'll actually shed its leaves once it starts getting too hot because it will lose water through the leaves. But the bark is photosynthetic. So you can see it's super green on the bark and the main stems. And that's because it also photosynthesizes. That's crazy. I've been hiding now, running from the curse of the black and I. Uh huh. Darling, I can feel it coming every time. Sat around last year, wished so many times that I would die. Uh huh. Chris is still on his run and we'll do a short like weightlifting workout afterwards. So I'm going to go ahead and prep dinner for the campfire and we are going to have campfire meatloaf and I'm going to try to make like a succotash. Succotash is supposed to be like loose corn kernels mixed with traditionally lima beans and red peppers or a squash. Um, I'm going to see what I can scrounge up to go with the loose corn kernels, but it's all going to go in foil over a campfire. So let's get started. Meatloaf is traditionally made with bread crumbs. We do not have bread crumbs, but we have herb seasoned stuffing. So if I just squish it up a little more, it's basically the same and it's already pre-seasoned. Mm. And there's no measuring ever done on this channel. So why start here? Some garlic powder, some onion powder, salt, and pepper. This is the epitome of hot brown, I think, is a meatloaf. Left it all and now I can see the night. Now, most people mix in a barbecue sauce. We don't have barbecue sauce per se, but what we do have is expired Arby's sauce. So. Just a little bit of that, and then of course you do the traditional sauce on top, which is ketchup or ketchup and mustard or barbecue sauce. 
I have the corn and we don't have any beans, which I thought we did. We don't have red peppers, uh, which normally also goes with it or a squash, but I do have cactus. So we tried this once um, fresh cut before from the grocery outlet store and we really liked it, but I wanted to try it jarred or canned so it lasts longer, has a longer shelf life. So it looks like this is going to be the succotash. Some desert meatloaf over a campfire is what's going to happen. Now comes putting it on aluminum foil. We don't have a Dutch oven or um, really like a good way to cook something over a fire aside from aluminum foil. So that's what we're going to put the meatloaf in. I'm going to do two separate ones, uh, that way it cooks faster and uh, there's less chance of it being raw in the middle, which I'm like notorious for undercooking stuff. Uh, so this will only help my success rate. It looks like a meat potato. and succotash just cooks over the fire and we wait this stuff makes awesome firewood it's super dry out here you know it doesn't rain much of course it's the desert which is a little confusing because it is so green out here but it's so dry and then you have so much surface area for all these little thorny twigs and uh, no paper no fake fire starter or any kind of petroleum product and it just goes right up and some of these older pieces are still pretty dense so and we have our firewood thief at work. She, yeah, she steals about 33% of all firewood is stolen. <laughs> Do you know what I'm making for dinner? Hot brown. Oh, hot brown, that's fantastic. <laughs> it's like quintessential hot brown. It's a hot log of brown. We even tried to not have hot brown. We we're gonna eat at a restaurant. We see all these other channels. People like to watch other people going out to restaurants, I guess. We're like, oh, we'll do that. And it's a cool little town. Kind of looks like something out of cars. Cool, and we'll just pop in. Everything was closed and shut down, so that didn't happen, so <laughs> back to hot brown. Because the meatloaf is gonna be a while, I tried to speed up the process by splitting it in two, but it is a log of meat. We are going to take our keystones through the desert into the pitch black because we are going to look for scorpions with this UV flashlight. UV light for uh, you young bucks that used to be or still are hanging around in the bars. It's what makes all the girls look pretty. <laughs> uh, so it also shows you it, it's uh, in the bar. It works opposite in the bar. It's a lie. Uh, you know, and you get in the truth light. If you've ever seen the old Seinfeld episode, you get in the truth light and, and it's a completely different animal. Well, in the desert, it's the opposite. The UV light in the desert shows you the truth of what's really there. Yeah, so it's, it's, it works the opposite of that. So if you see the seat uh, and everything there, how much that glows. It's very fake looking. Hopefully the camera doesn't unsaturate that, but that is not the color of that motorcycle. It's like neon. Also, I learned um, when I was out here looking for scorpions alone the other night and I tucked that flashlight under my under my armpit and I urinated. My <laughs> urine was <laughs> shockingly fluorescent green. So was it, it, really? it also uh, your urine is also uh, that that uh, set me back for a second there while I was uh, my brain took a second to process what was going on. You know, who probably knows all about this UV light with human body fluids is all of the mommies that watch the CSI. That's true. Uh, NCIS crime scene shows so we are just looking for a pop of green um in this purple little halo if you live in a region of the country that has scorpions you know that nine times out of ten they're not going to be just crawling around an open space they're going to be in very tight little crevices and holes which is why we don't leave our shoes outside we were going to do a video the reason we bought this light in the first place 
is when we were going to Baja, Mexico last year, Baja, California, we were going to do a scorpion catch and cook and eat them. <laughs> we looked up how to clean them, how to prepare them, how you, how you might cook, cook them. them. Yeah. Uh, a lot of recipes from like Thailand and Cambodia and how they prepare them. I'm that, sure... That Baja trip we had to cut short, so we didn't get a chance to do it. Would it, you still do it? I would do it, I think, if our subscriber count was a little bit higher. <laughs> um what if we hit ten thousand? would you do it yeah i would do it okay. that's a i mean we've been trying to hit ten thousand. we've been a youtube channel for five years yeah uh so ten thousand, i you know i thought was going to happen in the first year and then it didn't so i'd be so ecstatic for 10 I, yeah i'd probably do a scorpion catch and cook yeah so you can see nothing around really glows until you see these guys. Oh my God, Chris, it's a big one. You find some desert shrimp? Look how big it is. Oh, that's, that's pretty good so size. so fat. You, you called it a desert shrimp. Hopefully it comes out good in the camera. Uh, oh. Yeah, that thing glows. Look at that. Is this what you were trying to explain is like everything else is kind of purple and then it's just this crazy neon color. Hit it with the UV light one more time just so they can see where it's at. So now we have flashlights on. Uh, we're hitting this with light so we can film and you can see it. Look how that glows around everything else around it. Now, if you took, cut the UV light off, disappeared. Terrified. <laughs> it's I'm, a rock. <laughs> I'm immediately terrified. I don't like this. That's as close as I'll get. That's a fat boy. Most of the ones that we've seen are maybe like um, the first segment of my pinky or a little bit to the second segment. This guy is... Uh, pretty big. Hit it with that UV again. <laughs> Boom. Let the people see. That don't make <laughs> sense. I don't understand why they do that. <laughs> You're not lethargic anymore. Oh, that's terrifying. <laughs> that's too much speed for a desert shrimp. What if that thing is crawling towards your shoe or your your tent? This, <laughs> not only is the UV light for fun, uh, but it's also for safety. You know, if you want to do a quick scan around your tent before you go to sleep or something that. that's our camper in the background we just walked all over the desert and then found this big one just cruising by our campsite but i think we're going to get back and get to our meatloaf and uh, see how that came out or if it's raw in the middle and then what i'm most excited about is our uh our, oh, our date, date float, float. which uh, should set up because it's been it's been at 15 degrees now in our uh blue Eddy freezer cooler for several hours eight hours probably yeah. Okay, can you just like maybe go away from the truck camper as we leave? You know, go find a nice rock somewhere. Some of the corn kernels got a, a little burned. That's fire roasted. Yeah. Learn how to church it up. Look at that. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. And again, uh, still for Mr. Toby Keith, we're still rocking the solo cup. Brand R. I. P. R.I.P. baby. See how it tastes and see if it's cooked. I like how I'm testing. <laughs> if it's cooked too much or at all. Oh no, that's good. Look at that. Hot brown going down. Ooh. I did good seasoning that. It doesn't taste like just ground beef. I did good. Get you some. Just a big fire roasted meat brick yep. out here in the desert with some <laughs> little uh, cactus succotash. All right, now the most exciting part is we're going to check our Blue Eddy cooler and see if our date float has set. Another cool little thing about this cooler is it has a light. Whoa! That is super awesome. And there's our float, and it has set. Look at that. Rock hard. That is an ice cream cake. And it was at 15 degrees. Mm. Nice and solid. A little drippy. I used evaporated milk instead of cream this time with the sweetened condensed milk so it doesn't set quite as good with that but you still get that ice cream cake like slightly melted ice cream cake kind of consistency it's like soft serve it's the biggest treat on planet earth when you've been in the desert all day and it's dry and then you get to come home to um that right there oh yeah some ice cream cake basically date ice cream cake <laughs> it looks absolutely delicious That's heavenly. That needs a name. If you have a name for this, please let us know. I'd love to give this a name and uh, we'll put it in our cookbook. Oh yeah, someone recommended we start a cookbook. So uh, if you're interested in a candy adventures and cookbook. Our, uh, hot brown, <laughs> we got cold brown. 
I mean, it's all mid. Maybe that should be the name of the cookbook. It's all mid. <laughs> but that, oh my God, that's so sweet. That is so good with the dates. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Like and subscribe. Also, I'm curious. When I say subscribe, did you see on your phone, did you see the little subscription thing light up and glow? Uh, kind of like the scorpions did, because I think that's a new feature. Anyway, like and subscribe. And thank you to all our new Patreons. And we'll see you guys next video. Also, this merch is available and it's dope. Yeah, and we're going to turn terminate this website because we can't afford to maintain the domain name anymore. And we got to figure out a different way to make merch without going through the website. So get it while you can. Boop, boop. It ain't the letting go. It's more about the things that you take with. Uh-huh. I can feel it getting closer with every kiss. Got a beat or join, I'm trying to act surprised.